All right, students, today we are going to look at trigonometric ratios. And what these are, are basically just the comparison of two sides in a right triangle. So the comparison of two sides in a right triangle. So, for example, let's say we have something like this. A right a right triangle. Let's call this A B C. And let's call the opposite side of A. Let's call it lowercase a. This is going to be lowercase b and that's going to be c. Notice the capital letters are denoting angles. So the first ratio, trigonometric ratio, that we will look at is called sine. This is often denoted as S-I-N, just sine. Sine, let's consider angle A. So the ratio of angle A sine will always be opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, it will be A over B. So that is the sine ratio, opposite over hypotenuse. The second ratio that we will look at is cosine. And let's do the same variable. Let's do cosine of A. Well, cosine of A is adjacent. Let me use the same color. Let's do let's do adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent, remember the word adjacent is basically next to, so lowercase c over hypotenuse b. And the third ratio that we will look at is called tangent. Tangent, often considered or referred to as just tan. And we know that it's implying tangent. So let's do tangent of A. This one here is opposite over adjacent. So opposite of A, capital A, will be lowercase a. Adjacent of angle A is lowercase C. So lowercase a and lowercase b. So here we have the three trigonometric ratios sine, cosine, and tangent. There's a strategy that a lot of people utilize and it's called Sokatoa, and let me show you what that means. If you remember this strategy, Sokatoa, Sokatoa, the first letter is sine, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine will be adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent will be opposite over adjacent, Sokotoa. So now let's consider an example where we find the three trig ratios. Let's start with <clears throat> something like this, and let's call this triangle A, B, C. And let's make this 
13, 12, and let's make this 5. I need to find the sine of B, cosine of B, and tangent of B. Well, locate your angle B, and we know that sine, sine will be opposite over adjacent. We know that cosine of that will be 5 over adjacent. Tangent of B will be opposite over adjacent. All right, so sine opposite over adjacent, cosine op, uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. Um, tangent will be opposite over adjacent. Opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent. And let's say that I wanted to find the decimal form of each one. Well, 12 divided by 13, you get 0.3846. When we work with trig functions, you want to round to the nearest fourth degree, fourth decimal place. Not the second one, but the fourth decimal place. This will be 9, 2, 3, 1. This will be, um, let's see, this will be something like, well, it's going to be more than... 2, 2.4. Um, and actually, just to be sure, I believe this here is something different. Let me plug it into my calculator. <coughs> 12 divided by 13, we get 0 0.9231. 5 divided by 13 is 0 0.3846. All right. Now, you can use this. You can use this strategy when finding the ratios, any of these three ratios, sine, cosine, or tangent. Now let's say that I wasn't looking for the three ratios of B, but instead I was looking for sine of C, cosine of C, tangent of C. All right, it's the same, same um, idea. So sine of C will be opposite over hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of C will be adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent of C will be opposite over 12. So now that we've learned this, let's utilize this to find out to find out what the three angles uh, are, or at least the two of them, because we already know that one of them has to be 90 degrees. So this is going to be A, no, let's call this C. So I know this is C. And I already know this is going to be 90 degrees. The question is, what is the measurement of angle C and angle B? That's the dilemma. Well, recall from the last lesson that if I have something like this, this is... 90, let's make this 60, let's make this 30 degrees. We know that if the opposite side to angle 30 is 1, the hypotenuse will be double that, 
and the longer leg will be whatever that is times root 3. So if I consider this angle here, sine of, let's make this A, sine of A equals opposite over hypotenuse. And I know the fact that angle A is 30, sine of 30 equals 1 half. By the way, this is always the case. Sine of 30 degrees is always 1 half. But what if I didn't know that this was 30? All, all I would write is sine of A equals 1 half. How do I get the A by itself? How do I get A by itself? Well, we know that the inverse of multiplication is division the inverse of divisions, multiplication, and so on. So how do I get the A by itself? Well, to get rid of this, I have to utilize its inverse. And let's write this up here so you can see it better. So sine of A equals 1 half. To get rid of sine, I have to isolate A. To do that, I have to multiply by its inverse. This is the inverse, not negative 1, but its inverse to both sides. Now when I multiply by its inverse, these two will cancel out and you end up with A. On this side, if you guys consider your graphing calculator, somewhere down here, if you notice, there is sine in white and there is sine inverse in blue. Well, you click on that, you click on that, and put in one half, A will equals will equal thirty degrees. And that will be your answer. Thirty degrees. And let's say that you didn't know what this was. You know that ninety plus thirty is one twenty. And according to the triangle sum theorem, this has to be sixty. Alright, so with that in mind, let's go back to this problem here I know that's C well let's start with sine of C I know that sine of C has to equal opposite over hypotenuse so to leave C by itself I multiply both sides by its inverse and this is what I get C equals the inverse of sine of 5 divided by 13. And that is about 22.6199. So I just found this degree here, which is about 22.6 degrees. If I add that plus 90, and then subtract that from 180 degrees, I know that B will equal to 67.3801 degrees. So I got angle C, B, and I know that angle A has to equal to 90. All right, so the biggest thing that you should remember is what sine, cosine, and tangent stand for. And also remember that to isolate an angle C, I take its inverse on both sides, and that will give me the missing angle. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I will do my best to answer them as quick as I can. Have a nice day.